Hello everyone, my name is Sachi, I'm a junior from Unionville High School, and today we'll be talking about Irish jigs. The jig is hands down one of my favorite styles of music. It's light, it's peppy, and it just makes you want to dance. So today I'll be walking you through how to play two jigs of your very own. Now before we begin, you can find the links for today's pieces titled Willie Coleman's Jig and The Swallowtail Jig in the description below. Now without further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about what makes a song a jig. The jig was popularized in 18th century Ireland, but the term itself stems from the French word jig. And those of you interested in music history might recognize this word from the Baroque dance suite, in which the jig was one of the movements along with the chacon and the allemand, to name a few. In modern language, however, the word jig refers to Irish folk dance and its backing music. It is difficult to pin down any defining characteristics of Irish jig music, however, many agree that for a song to be considered a jig, it must be written in compound meters, such as 6-8 or 12-8, where the beat is subdivided into three parts instead of two, like you might find in 3-4. So when you look at the swallowtail jig, for example, you'll notice that eighth notes are actually stringed into groups of three instead of groups of two. In addition, due to the use of traditional instruments such as whistles, Irish jigs are often restricted to simpler keys such as G or D major. You don't need an understanding of music theory to fully appreciate the power of jig music, however, this is more to help you understand what makes jig music so unique. I think that's enough talking from me for now. Let's move on to Willie Coleman's jig. I'll start with a short demonstration, and then I'll walk you through some tips on how to improve your playing style. So there's two things that really make a jig pop, and I think the first is the bowing, and the second and more difficult of the techniques to accomplish is definitely the ornamentation. Um, you'll notice that these there's these grace notes uh, sprinkled throughout the piece, uh, like even in the first measure. Um, so we call them grace notes in classical music, but actually uh, these are called double cuts uh, in traditional Irish music where you play the note. So on that very first measure, I have that A. And then I go to the note, or maybe two notes above it. So in that case, that would be a B. And then I come back down to the A, all within that one note. So all together, it would sound like this. And it, it's a little bit hard to keep in time at first. So my recommendation would obviously to be, uh, well, as in any practice session, uh, go slow at first, and make sure that you really get those grace notes on the beat, but still have them in time. So you don't want to lag that note, um, that double cut, as you uh, keep playing through the song. Like, you might accidentally do like this. Uh, so yeah, just pay attention to the triplets and um, keep it in time and you'll be perfectly fine for this song. Now, I talked about bowing briefly. Uh, it's already marked in here for this one, but I want to show you that there are multiple ways to interpret Irish uh, jig bowings. So in the next one, I'm going to leave the bowings out, and then we're going to talk about a couple interpretations, uh, one or two interpretations that we can do uh, for the swallowtail jig. I mentioned before I left out the bowings for the swallowtail jig, uh, mostly because I wanted to talk about how to interpret bowings. Um, the way you interpret bowings is really dependent on your audience. Like, if you're playing it as a solo, maybe there's one way you can do it, but oftentimes when uh, ensembles play with dancers, they'll often focus on the backbeat. So, uh, since this song is in two, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, they would often emphasize the fourth, eighth note in that. Uh, rhythm so it'd be one two three four five six one two three four five six um but in here i chose to emphasize the first beat which is one two three four five six one two three four five six uh by slurring into the down beat of uh every two measures so it'd be go like this <laughs> to emphasize that back beat, you don't have to do any slurs at all, and that sounds like this. And it 
sounds a whole lot different, really, uh, depending on which notes you emphasize. Um, so play around with that, see what works. Uh, usually you want to emphasize the beats themselves, uh, not whatever eighth notes are within that beat. So I wouldn't emphasize the second or, you know, fifth notes uh, of each measure. But for the second part, um, there's really only one way to play this. I would slur the uh, quarter note, eighth note rhythms like this. So that that uh, quarter note, eighth note uh, rhythm should be slurred. Then this would be a down bow. So those last two eighth notes. into the downbeats, you would play it like that. Otherwise, if you want to play it with emphasis on the backbeat, you might play it like this. And that's our overview of Irish jig music. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly had a lot of fun making it and practicing the music with you guys. Um, I think one of the reasons I love this style of music so much is the way that I am able to break all the classical music rules that I've learned over the years and kind of just toss them out the window. Um, there's a lot of different ways to interpret Irish jig music, uh, especially with the bowing and the ornamentation. Uh, but please note that this is not, you know, a full um, overview of Irish jig music. There's a lot of other skills and techniques that um, I haven't covered in this video, but you're free to look them up in your own time, and there are plenty of resources out in the internet. Uh, this is simply just a video to help you get started uh, with Irish music. That being said, that's all I have for you today, and until next time, take care. <laughs>